Something big is brewing for the Toronto Maple Leafs as we are now about two days away from the deadline where they need to make some moves. And a brand new report has revealed a very interesting Timothy Lilligren trade update. So to break down that report and discuss what it means going forward as moves are imminent. Stay tuned for all that in this episode. But before we get into it, quick reminder, hit the subscribe button. If you're part of the 7 year sober saying you aren't subscribed, this is the place to be for daily Leafs content. But Darius, we have a lot of things to go over today. November 1st is obviously the deadline for uh, the Leafs to make some moves. Uh, Connor Dewar. Yanni Hockenpah, Cal Yarncroft, all these guys are going to be returning in some capacity very soon, and they need to free up a couple of roster spots. And the whole time we've been thinking it's going to be Timothy Lilligren, and it seems like that is going to be the case. And a new report literally dropped one minute ago as of the time of recording, and it says several teams have shown interest in Toronto Maple Leafs defenseman Timothy Lilligren, asking what's the price going to be. It seems that there's enough demand that they could likely trade him without issue so it seems at this point that's the route they're looking to go in trading timothy lilligren it seems like again there's enough demand that they could trade him without issue without having to attach any picks or anything like that maybe get a late uh, round pick back in return for the defenseman but there's he was healthy scratched the past few games he got into one game this entire season there's a lot of things and we know that utah made a trade we'll dive into that so that takes them out of the equation but there's still a lot of other teams that could get in there what are your thoughts on this report for frank saravalli that uh, literally just dropped yeah, later in the video, we'll get into the practice lines, which don't include Timothy Lilligren again, and obviously some trade scenarios revolving around him. But in terms of, you know, actually moving off of him, I'm thinking it's very likely and it's probably going to happen tomorrow because, again, like you mentioned, the LTIR deadline is November 1st, at least for the, the Leafs players, I should say. There's not a league-wide LTIR deadline that uh, Hawk and Paw and Dewar will be activated. Yarn Croak is still out, and I'm not sure they might be moving him to LTIR, but it doesn't free up enough cap space nonetheless. So um, I've been seeing a lot of it in our comment section on streams. Uh, for us personally, I've been seeing it online, on Twitter, this whole narrative around they're going to have to attach a sweetener to Timothy Lilligren for somebody to take him, I think is ridiculous. I think Timothy Lilligren is an NHL defenseman. I think that he just doesn't fit into Craig Berube's style of play, his system, and what Craig Berube likes in a defenseman. So I think that that's why he's the odd man out here and not that he's a bad player. He's an NHL defenseman. And I think a lot of teams, a lot of teams are probably lining up to try and get him. They're just trying to figure out what the price is and hopefully the Leafs have not, you know, priced themselves out of actually moving him at this point. But we we have no insight into exactly what they're asking for right now. But I would suspect it's draft picks. I don't think the Leafs can take any money back. It's going to be a draft pick. But it depends on where he's going to go at this point, I think, because Utah was looking like a very likely suitor. And as we'll get to in a second, they have made a trade to acquire another defenseman. So uh, it's looking unlikely that he'll end up going to Utah at this point. Yeah, probably not Utah, but definitely some other teams. And again, the fact that Frank Sarvalli came out and says this is interesting timing. He obviously has sources. So maybe this is alluding to a trade that's going to happen over the coming days. You see this here. Uh, the fact that the fact is that between Lilligan and Camp, at least have $5.4 million worth of extendable players in the press box tonight. They also happen to have around $5 million of players worth currently on the LTIR. And obviously, um, David Camp is going to stay with the team. He's been playing fine. I think he's going to, uh, he's not really an issue at the moment at least but there are a lot of fans out there that are doing that but yeah you can mention utah made a trade yesterday we know that they were dealing with a bunch of different injuries but they made a trade for a defenseman and this obviously impacts the toronto maple leafs in a uh, in a couple of ways here and one of the first ones is of course utah was originally uh, one of the named landing locations and potential landing spots for timothy Lurgan because they went down out of two defensemen and it seems like now the Utah Hockey Club are probably not going to go ahead and try to acquire Timothy Lurgan. They already made their move. And again, his cap hit is $3 million over the next two years. So $3 million each year for the next two years until 2026 when he's a UFA. But there is the other team in this trade is the uh, Red Wings. And I saw this tweet here. It's pretty funny. Detroit freed up a spot on defense in exactly $3 million cap space. Now, why is that classic Brian Windhorst meme? It is interesting, though. Now, I'm not entirely sure if it is relative or not, but it is intriguing that they freed up $3 million of cap space yesterday. This tweet comes out now. It's a good chance maybe the Red Wings are getting in on this uh, on the sweepstakes. It makes sense. Add a young defenseman to that team, and uh, I don't mind this idea here. That being said, it could just be a coincidence. They are possibly turning into to the Toronto Red Wings, which is a junior team in the GTHL. But uh, they also have Justin Hall there on the right side. So maybe they could be looking to acquire Timothy Lilligren at this point. I don't think the Leafs want to trade 
in conference and certainly in division. I don't think that that is their goal, but I wouldn't put it past them because they're probably going to, they have to move some money out one way or another. So if somebody's willing to take on the contract, uh, then I can see them moving him. But yes, it's interesting. They moved off Olimata to obviously trading him to Utah because Utah needed a defenseman. And obviously maybe they thought that was more cost effective for them. Utah that is. And, and Detroit, they have now $3 million that they can take on if they want. Does that mean they want Timothy Lilligren? I'm not sure. The right side's not terrible. It's not bad. They have a couple right shot defensemen there, but they could maybe use a guy like Timothy Lilligren. So this opens up another option for the Toronto Maple Leafs if they're looking at that. I would think that you would want to trade him out west. I think Utah would have been the best scenario there, especially because they're missing two right shot defensemen, two injuries. So uh, obviously it looks like that probably has closed with them acquiring Mata, but we'll see uh, over the next day or two because it's it's going to happen in the next day or two, and it looks like it's Lilligren at this point. It could be somebody else as well. We don't know how much uh, you know cap space they want here. We don't know what Brad True Living's thinking in terms of flexibility at this time, but we know for sure they're going to have to move off one con contract and Lilligren in terms of everybody they can move off of makes the most yeah and again they do play tomorrow so it'll be interesting to see how all that factors in and let us know do you think that the Red Wings are going to be a part of the deal or do you think it's going to be a different team but as we look at the lines at practice today and these are of course going to be the presumed lines for practice tomorrow Nyes, Matthews, Marner, Pacioretty still on the second line with Tavares and Nylander, McMahon, Domi, Holmberg, Lorenz, Kampf and Reeves with Connor Dewar and Robertson as the uh the extras so a couple things here, actually. So, obviously, for one, it might be the second game in a row that Nick Robertson is out. And I did say that on the stream. Makes some sense. They don't want to change anything after that dominant win uh, to beat the Winnipeg Jets on Monday. But, Darius, what are your thoughts uh, on this? Again, we're seeing Hockenpah. We're seeing names that we've been waiting to see for a while. Timothy Lilligren, though, and, and Philip Myers are both out. I'm not going to be playing on Thursday. I'm bearing some other things. And I would presume, that's like you mentioned, a trade. If it's going to go down surrounding Lill Timothy Lilligren, it's going to happen tomorrow in all likelihood and he's not going to be playing in tomorrow's game so it's interesting robo is out again and they're going to rock back with the uh, the lines that they had on monday night against the winnipeg jets yeah to touch on robinson for a second i think he's going to eventually get back into the lineup but right now they just had a big win against the winnipeg jets and i think brew is thinking don't touch what isn't broken and speaking of which if you look at defensive pairings they're going with the same ones that they switched to just a couple games ago so they're going uh you know they're splitting up riley and tanov again and it worked right and until it doesn't work then i'm sure they'll they'll switch it back or try something else but yes lilligren's on the outside looking in again it looks like he's unlikely to play tomorrow night against seattle and this could be it for him as a toronto maple leaf right it just doesn't look like he's going to play uh i don't think there's any showcasing going on like people have been saying i think that's that just doesn't work that way i think they want to ice the best possible team uh so none of that's going on and one thing that a lot of people haven't been talking about is hawk and pot is you know he's been regularly skating with them the last couple of weeks um and getting up to speed i think people just and media haven't been talking about it too much because you know he is still at the time a long ways away from getting into the lineup and now just a couple of days it seems like he could be in the lineup as soon as next week we don't know for sure but it looks like he's going to be activated off ltir so he is there he is skating and I wonder how he factors into the lineup as soon as next week. It's going to be very interesting. Yeah, let us know in the comments your thoughts on all this. A ton of things are going down for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and expect a big move soon. We'll keep you up to date with it. So make sure to hit the subscribe button. We'll see you guys later.